Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to fill a double barrel cake. And all of the tools that I've used in this video are listed in the description box below as well, so make sure to check that out. For this tutorial, I've already leveled eight vanilla cake layers and I soaked them in simple syrup already. And if you'd like to see how I level my cake layers, I'll leave a link to that video in the description box below. So I'm filling my first four cake layers as I usually do. I stuck down the first cake layer with a bit of buttercream to my Wilton cake circle. And then I'm smoothing out a bit of buttercream in between the cake layers. And as usual, I'm using Swiss meringue buttercream. That recipe is also listed in the description box below as well as my vanilla cake recipe. And now I'm spreading my third buttercream filling onto my third cake layer and I'm placing my fourth cake layer on top of this. And this is where your support comes. I'm using four dowels to support the weight of the next four cake layers. You'll need to cut the dowels to the right height and I'm using an edible marker and I'm marking it flush with the top of the cake so I know exactly where to cut it. After I've inserted the dowels back into the cake, I spread a thin layer of buttercream to the top to make my cake circle stick to this and to prevent any cake from ripping away when you're removing this cake board, I stuck down a bit of baking paper to the back with some shortening. I'm using a Wilton cake circle that is 5 centimeters or 2 inches smaller in diameter than the diameter of the cake to prevent any ridges or seams on the sides when smoothing it down with some buttercream. And the flavors of the buttercream that I use in this particular video were Oreo and coconut and I made it for a wedding cake a while ago and it was such a fun wedding cake to make. It was a chalkboard and wood grain wedding cake and I'll show you the end result at the end of the video and I also have a video tutorial on how I created that look and I'll also leave that linked in the description box below and that was it for this long intro and everything that is listed in the description box. Let's continue. And now I've added a buttercream crumb coat to the sides and top of my cake. And this just locks in all of those crumbs that you don't want to have in your final buttercream coat. And as I was ridiculously demonstrating just now, I'm using a cake scraper that exceeds the top of my cake to make sure that I don't have any ridges or seams as you would have with a cake scraper that is slightly or much smaller than the height of your cake. While smoothing out a buttercream, there is excess buttercream that accumulates onto your cake scraper and it's best to scrape that off once in a while. After roughly smoothing down the sides and top of the cake, I chill it in the fridge for at least an hour so the buttercream solidifies and I have no problem flipping it upside down to get that sharp edge at the top. After the cake has been chilled, I add a generous amount of buttercream to the top and I evenly spread it out with a spatula. And then I add a sheet of baking paper to the top and flip it upside down. And you want a thick layer of buttercream at the top of the cake so you have a bit of leeway when you're trying to see if your cake is level. And I use a level for this to make sure that my cake is completely straight from all angles. Wherever my cake isn't level, I press it down and that thick buttercream layer that is now at the bottom will even it out and will make it level. And then I'm adding a generous amount of buttercream to the sides of the cake as well and smoothing it down with my extra large cake scraper. And to make sure that my sides are completely straight, I have my cake scraper completely flush with my turntable and perpendicular to the sides of the cake. And when you're happy with the smoothness of your buttercream and the straightness on the sides, you can remove that extra lip of frosting at the top by scraping it off using your cake board as a guide. And then it's time to chill the cake again for at least an hour or preferably overnight before flipping it right side up again. then carefully flip the cake again and as you can see there are a few gaps at the top and because the cake is cold the buttercream that you will use to fill in those gaps will set immediately and make it easier to smooth it out and it won't harm your sharp edges. 
And that's it for today. I really hope you learned something from this double barrel cake tutorial. And as promised, this is the wedding cake that I used this double barrel in. And I really love this cake and I hope you do too. And last but not least, I want to thank you for watching and I hope to see you next time again. Thank you. Bye. Mwah.